So um, you wanted to speak a little bit first, I believe, about uh, the benefits of Cisco uh, in the institution here? Yeah, well, uh, I, I think that the, the partnership that's been developed, which is the Cisco itself, with the federal provincial government, uh, with other universities, uh, really establishes that UW is a hub of a new green technology. Okay. Uh, and by the way, the, the investment is a $14 million investment, which is the largest research-based grant that the University of Arizona had. Uh, how many was it? 14 million. 14. Okay. Have you seen the news release on it? Yeah, I yeah. saw a figure of, uh, I've seen a couple different figures. Well, there were the, the, the two governments contributed uh, uh, over seven, and Cisco's contributing five. Okay. So I, I'm wondering, as a private corporation, how is Cisco profiting from this if they're putting money in at this point? Well, they're, they're, they're doing a chair. They're doing an endowed chair. So I mean, they're not doing anything commercial. They're, they're giving us, a uh, out of the grant, uh, two things will happen. Mm -hmm. And one is uh, a contribution towards an endowed chair in collaborative technology, which means that we will be able to once the endowment is uh, up to full strength, um, hire a senior research academic on collaborative technology, which is a combination of communication and innovation. Uh, and secondly, uh, we will be able to, uh, the other three million will go into a substantial upgrade of the IT system for the university. Uh, well, you know, we've like every other university, our information system is really becoming a major ingredient in our management and our teaching and our learning and our research. Uh, it's uh, difficult to keep up with the most contemporary innovations and developments, and I think this will give us a chance to substantially leap forward. But perhaps the most exciting part is that the technology itself uh, the idea of this web tree technology really it gives a huge uh, opportunity for people at the university to do uh, new kinds of research, uh, global teaching. We can bring in people from around the world. There's, a, there's going to be a very specific network between our university, University College of the North and Brandon University. Mm -hmm connection with Ottawa and then a connection with something like four or five hundred sites that uh, Cisco has around the world. So, you know, this morning is a good example of uh, the teaching on, on the environment and had a, a very good guest speaker coming in in the normal kind of video way. Well, this telepresence is like you and I sitting together talking. I mean, it just makes it much more intimate, much clearer, much more distinct, and much more elaborate about what, what you can show and what you can do. So there's a tremendous opportunity for innovation here in terms of uh, what we how we uh, teach, how we can bring people in, uh, enormous savings on transportation. Uh, Cisco's company itself saved half its you know, half its travel budget in one year, fifty percent uh, reduction in its travel budget. So that's a that's a very if we can achieve that, that'll be a very significant saving. So yeah. Uh, is that to say that the university is looking to move more towards a model that, say, U of M is doing right now, where they have um, more, I instead of professor and student interaction within that classroom setting, that it would be more distance learning? No. Well, the, we do a lot of distance learning. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we still maintain traditional small classes and intimate relations inside the university. But this means that, for example, you're sitting in a classroom in sociology and one of the world's best sociologist uh, on, on class distinction is teaching at the University of Sussex, that can be brought in like this into your classroom. Gotcha. Um, I was wondering about how exactly the deal was struck. Um, I heard a couple of things that, uh, that people had raised concerns. One of them was that it was essentially, I, I don't quite understand this part of it, that it was done over a beer in New York. <laughs> Uh, I read that in the free press. Well, it didn't quite make sense to me. I was wondering if you could clear that up a little bit. Well, uh, you know, so sometimes these things happen simply by 
serendipity or good luck, but uh, Harvey Richardson, mm -hmm. uh, the senior uh, business person in town, uh, knew Rolf Lloyd, who was the executive vice president of Cisco. Mm -hmm. And they were meeting, in, they were both at the New York meeting of uh, Bill Clinton's, what they call it, Common, common Goal, whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part of his climate initiative. Yeah. yeah. And they were just sitting down having a drink together. Mm -hmm. And Rob is from Winnipeg. He's a, he's a graduate from here. Okay. He's a graduate of you, right? Yeah, then, but, but from, from the Winnipeg School. Yeah. He, went to, he went to Cleveland here. Yeah, okay. And uh, they were just talking about it. And, of course, Hartley Richardson had just, he and his family and foundation had just put in three and a half million dollars towards the Richardson College of the Environment, which is all they built. So they got into a discussion. and about how this new tech, Cisco was becoming increasingly a, sustain, a company based on sustainability. And that they were setting up these research centers around the world. And Harvey basically said, have you thought about putting one in Winnipeg? Mm -hmm. And when he came back, he called me and said, uh, would you and W be interested? I said, well, let's explore it. So we, we went down to meet with Rob Lloyd and his associates in, uh, in uh, San Jose looked at the technology and said, well, this is really dynamite for the university. And this just opens up all kinds of links and connections that we could never otherwise have. And it took us about then two years to get, we, we made uh, a case of the provincial government that we should set up a network 